Cliff Central, because we're all about radio. Hello, fellow DXers. Lloyd Van Horn from DX Central in the shack this afternoon on a on a warm summer day here in the Northern Hemisphere, and that means this time of the year, keeping an eye out on the FM band for sporadic E openings, and that's exactly what we're doing here in the shack right now. We have our ELAD FDMS3, our four-element Yagi Beam, sitting there waiting for E-Skip to come in. Um, so the question was actually kind of posed, and this is kind of what made me think of this, is, is kind of me sitting here looking for, for E-Skip. The question was posed, how does one identify an e-skip opening? How does one go about knowing when there's an opening? You can't sit by your radio nonstop, right? You can't just sit there and watch and, and hope for something. And you know, sometimes e openings act a little funny. It might be open on one frequency, but it's not on another. I've seen it where the low end of the band, there's not a whole lot of of E coming in, maybe on one frequency or two, but then you go up a little bit higher in the band and there's a couple more and there's a couple more and a couple more. And so it kind of skips around sometimes. So how does one identify when there's a potential opening occurring that makes me want to have to go over and turn on the radio or go to the radio or go to my SDR and hit record, whatever it might be? So I thought that'd be a good idea for us to look at today. Um, some of the techniques that you can use to identify and spot when an opening is actually happening. Um, so we're going to do that here. We're going to look at a couple of the different techniques that I use and then talk a bit about some of the other ones that I know some other folks use as well. Um, now, there are no right or wrong answers here. Um, there are probably so many other techniques that are out there that are being used and are working very, very well for you or for other DXers. So don't just take my word for it and kind of run with it and expect that to be the end all be all. This is just the technique that I use. Um, these are the things that I use that help me be able to um, identify when an opening is happening. So keep that in mind. Um, the first thing that you want to do is if you have a, if you're using a radio, it's a little bit different. If you're using like a desktop radio or a little portable, um, I just recently picked up a Sanjian HD 14, HDR 14, um, little portable that I use for spotting, uh, e-skip openings if I'm outside or at the beach or whatever. Um, so those are great for that purpose. If you're doing some DX that way. Um, but kind of what we're going to focus on today is the use of SDR technology. And the reason for that is how much easier this makes it to be able to do the DX, identify an opening, DX during the opening, and then even after the opening. Um, because you can, you can record sections or in some cases the entire FM band and be able to do that review at your leisure and be able to get more stations in your log. We'll talk about that. All right, so we're going to really focus on this particular technique for SDR technology. Some of these uh, pieces we're going to talk about will also apply to you, though, if you don't use an SDR. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is a website called fmlist.org. Um, now, if you've been following the channel for a while or if you follow my Twitter account at DX Central, that's our username over at Twitter, um, you've probably heard me talk about FM list quite a bit. Um, it's a fantastic website um, that allows you to have a lot of tools at your disposal to identify an e-skip opening or a tropo opening and be able to share what you're hearing with DXers around the world so that that kind of feeds back into that data pool so we can all identify those openings together. So what you'll want to do is go here to fmlist.org and the first thing I want to show you is probably the easiest way to identify if an opening is occurring in your area. Um, and that is by looking at the visual logbook of current conditions. So from this page, you don't have to log in. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to have an account even. You can just go right here and go to this first link, the visual logbook map and maps and statistics of FMDAB um, uh, overreaches. So if I click on that first link, let me get rid of my RDS spy here. It's coming to a page that looks like this. Sometimes there will not be a date here, so you just click on the year, 2021 in this case. And that'll bring up a list. And then just click on the most recent one. In this case, it is July 1st, so I'm clicking on July 1st. And then you're going to get a map that kind of looks a little bit like, 
will pop up. Sometimes, especially if there's a lot of activity going, it'll take a little bit of time. So it'll look kind of like this. You may be over in your area if you're in Europe. Um, it kind of looks like this. You see what they got going on. Look at all the DX they've been doing in Europe today. You lucky, lucky folks. Look at that. Um, but yeah, let's look at uh, using my, my US here as an example because we have an actually a little mini opening happening right now. Um, this is everything that's been logged as of today for July 1st. If I go though up here, there's a little pull down menu that says select log period and then I have a, a list of options. I usually keep mine, there's there's things like last five minutes, last 30 minutes, last hour, last two hours, last three hours. I usually keep mine at either five minutes or 15 minutes. It just depends on if I'm looking for an opening or if I'm in the middle of an opening. Um, sometimes I'll go between the two. But what I'm looking for here is kind of recent activity to get an idea of what's going on. So let me go over here and show the last 30 minutes as an example because we've had some activity. And this DCS basically stands, it's a donut. What happens is if you are, let's say we have this DXer here up in New England uh, in the US right here. You can tell because they have a little black antenna look to it right here. That is a receiving location. And then you have this orange FM on the other end. That's the station that that person logged. The line between them indicates the path that that reception took. There's a color coding down here at the bottom of the map that can give you an indication of the MUF. Um, depending on what the color of the line is, will tell you what the MUF of that particular catch was. And so in this case, when you, when you have one of those receptions, this donut basically creates, uh, well, this, this donut is created that basically it draws a line directly through the middle of that donut between you and the station that you received. And so then from that, it extrapolates out, you know, how far is that away from you? And then from that, it says, okay, everyone who's in this green area here should be able to hear something in there. And more than likely, like, let's just pretend it was this other little black antenna right here, this other receiving location, it would be the same thing. I'd be going straight through that donut and anything on this end over here is what I would expect this person over here by Philadelphia, New Jersey, I would expect them to be able to hear something in Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, that area there. Now, that can be off to the side a little bit. It could be maybe something over here, maybe something over here. Or you see this case where you have this person in New England hearing out west, you have this person to their south hearing up to the northeast. So it just depends on what's being heard. And this is why FM list is so important that we all are helping out and logging what we're hearing on FM list. Um, that way you share that data in real time and we can all see that and get ideas of what the propagation is doing. Because essentially what this donut is trying to do is guess where the e-skip cloud is based on what you're hearing. And the more of these logs that you're putting into FM list, the more accurate you're going to get on that cloud. Um, you'll start to see this big, huge white donut. You'll have another donut kind of over here, another donut over here, and kind of start stacking on top of each other. And you'll notice a little clearing kind of like right up in here. That's the one area where there's not any green. Well, guess where your cloud is, right? So in this case, it looks like we have two clouds that are kind of in play, one here between uh, New Jersey and up into Canada, and this one between New England and Missouri. Um, so that's, that's kind of what's happening there. So this is how I can, one of the ways that I can look, I can look at this website, go to fmlist.org, click on that visual map, load up the last 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it might be, and I can see a visual of these e-skip openings with these donuts. And I can approximate now, my location here in Charleston says that I should be in able to DX off of this e-skip cloud that's right here in this general area. And I would expect to be hearing something in the Michigan, Wisconsin, Ontario area. That's where I would expect to be getting my DX from if I'm if I am pulling an e-skip in. Now, I may not be influenced by this cloud. Maybe, maybe not. I may be getting more influence from this cloud over here, or I may not be getting either one. This just helps you get a visual of what may be occurring. You can verify that with what you're hearing with your own ears or seeing with your own eyes, if it's RDS decode or whatever. And then if you log it, now you're helping to add those data points in so that everybody else is able to see it as well. And we all benefit from that, okay? 
The other side of this as well, as you see this whole green area here, um, if you're in this green area, when somebody logs, you can actually set up an alert so that you can be notified when there's an e-skip opening that is covering your general area. So I go in here, I have an account, it's gonna log into my account. If you go to my FM, I'm gonna turn this off for now. This is what you should see is this red box right here when you've logged in for the first time or if you've not already set this alert up. It'll be a red here that says ESA is off. Click on that and it'll say, would you like to start this for your location? You say yes or okay. And it says, awesome. So it's going to now start letting you know by email whenever you get an e-skip opening that kind of covers your general area. And this is what that email would look like. An e-alert has been generated at this time. The following directions might work, 342 degrees. You can click on this link to see the current situation, which will then pull you up to your map here. So you can see, and sometimes it'll tell you if it's one direction, that means there's been, like in this case, for me, I only have one direction that's being shown here um, in the donut that I'm located in. This other one over here, this other donut, my location is not inside that donut, so I'm not gonna be part of that, so that location doesn't count. So this is kind of uh, west-southwest, right? But if there was another DXer here in North Carolina hearing up into Wisconsin, now there's two directions. If there was a DXer over here in Arkansas hearing into New York, now there's a three, and so forth. So the more directions you see, the more significant and strong the opening is because more people are logging stuff in it. I had one the other day that said, I think eight or 10 or maybe 11 directions um, during a particularly strong opening. So it was just a huge cluster of green donuts here and lines going all over the place. So again, this is a great way that you can notify yourself. You don't have to sit by your radio. You can use the fmlist.org site to help alert you when it thinks an opening might be happening. Okay, so that's one, and that's that's regardless if you use an SDR or not. It doesn't matter what kind of technology you're using to receive. That's one way that you can help yourself to be able to find an e-skip opening is by two things. One, watching the map, and two, having that e-skip alert notify you when an opening happens that kind of covers your area. And I've had several openings so far this year that I wasn't paying attention. I got the email, ran upstairs, saw my... My band was full of signals, hit record, went back downstairs watching TV with a wife or whatever it was, came back later, reviewed the IQ recording and pulled out logs from that. So I was able to not miss an opening because I was alerted that it was there. We're going to talk a bit about that IQ recording piece here in a second, but I just at least wanted to show you this first part, regardless of how you DX, what you DX on or whatever, this is a great way to do it um, and to be notifying yourself when one is coming up. Now I'm going to go to the last five minutes. And you can see the only one in the last five minutes is this one from here up into Canada. Um, you can also, you know, I can do the last three hours. Now it's not gonna, if he doesn't have the DCS here um, in parentheses next to the log period, this one says DCS, this one says DCS, this one says DCS. Um, if it doesn't have DCS, you're not gonna see the donut, you're just gonna see the lines, okay? So really anything 30, 15 or five minutes are your options to see the donut, okay? So hopefully this helps you out. Uh, looks like somebody saw, and you can, and this is the other thing too, is you can click on these and get more information. So a DXer in Caswell, probably up here in Maine, it looks like. Yeah, Maine, heard a station where I'm located here in Charleston, in Monk's Corner, uh, our local country station on 92.5. So you can do that. So let's say you have a DXer that's in your area. Let's say I'm close by to this DXer right here in the New Jersey area. I can click on their little icon. If I can get to that particular one. This is Nick Langan in Tabernacle. I can see all of the logs from that particular DXer and it's now gonna zoom in and only show me logs made by that particular DXer right? So I can see what their path looks like. So I can gleam some information if I want to, if I have other DXers near my area to get an idea, okay, if I'm located next to Nick or near Nick, here's what Nick is seeing. I, I should expect to see something similar, right? 
Um, every once in a while, you'll get something very odd. I want to show you what I mean here. Um, every once in a great while, you'll get something a little odd on these e-skip openings where everything is telling you to look in one direction, but you end up getting something completely different. Um, so I'm going to go here. I think this was the 20... I want to say it was the 28th. It might have been 27th. Let me look real quick. It'll take it a second to load. Probably because there are people right now logging in and logging their loggings. So that's good. All right. So this was an opening that we had on the 28th of June. You see it's a lot going on here. So I'm going to go, this should be me right here. Yeah, there I am. So I'm going to show just my logs that I had that day. Because I want you to see something very interesting. Sometimes the way these e-skip clouds work, it will, they move, right? Or they change shape or change density or change altitude. And so you may be, as, as you would expect with any kind of cloud, right? And so you may be getting a different look at that cloud at different times. So you'll see here I had two distinct openings. I had an e-cloud that was here for about 30 minutes, giving me propagation into Wisconsin, Minnesota, South and North Dakota. I had a second e-cloud that was giving me propagation up into Maine, Massachusetts, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Quebec, up in here. These were two separate e-clouds, right? So the first 30 minutes I was getting this path, and then it kind of eroded eroded and everything was coming in from over here. Now, here's the crazy thing. I had my beam still pointed northwest looking over here and I was getting, at that time, I was getting New Brunswick, I was getting Nova Scotia, I was getting Quebec, like this end of Quebec way over here. Now, I spun my beam around to that particular location to be able to maximize the amount of signal I was getting from there to get low, weaker signals and things like that. But even when my beam was pointed northwest, I was still getting signals to my northeast. That's another thing I want you guys to kind of remember is that you don't, during a really good e-skip opening especially, you don't have to necessarily have your antenna pointed at the signals. It helps if you can do it. But sometimes you get something off the side or off the back. It just kind of comes in sometimes at weird angles and weird ways with these e-skip openings. So it doesn't really matter where you have your antenna pointed, you're still going to get the DX. And I want to use that example when I show you here on the 28th, these two logs right, if I can get my mouse pointer, right here. One in Kansas and one in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. While I was hearing all of this up in here in Minneapolis and North and South Dakota, and I was starting to hear New Brunswick and Quebec, randomly, I had a Kansas station and an Oklahoma station that just randomly popped up. They're the only two stations so far in my log review, even close to those locations that I've heard. So every once in a while, you'll get off the edge of the cloud a little bounce, or maybe if it's something different altitude, or maybe a little secondary cloud kind of spins off of the other one, or whatever it could be. You just get this little, uh, that kind of pops in there for a few minutes. These were in there too long to be meteor scatter. They were in there for several minutes but they just kind of happened to pop up and then they were gone after that and that was it. But you'll just get these little off the side sometimes. Um, so that's something I just want to make sure you know is you, you may see that every once in a while just because you're only seeing this location for the majority of your stuff. If you hear something off to the side of it, don't be surprised. It happened to me with another opening that was kind of in this Missouri, Iowa, Kansas, Nebraska area. I heard something up by Chicago in Illinois or Michigan rather. I heard something up on this uh, Chicago side of Michigan right across the lake, a low-power FM station out of nowhere in the middle of, of Michigan, right? And it just was off by itself. If you look at the map, it was the only one even close to it, but there it was. And it was just it was one of those kind of things. You get on the edge of these clouds sometimes or you get some weird bounce that just kind of happens. So keep that in mind. So let's talk a bit now. I want to shift gears and talk about um, using SDR technology for helping you. So we've talked about FM list and when you can use the, the map or the, the alerts to alert you and kind of notify and spot these that way. Here's one thing that I do. 
Now, obviously, everybody is different. Everyone's going to have different techniques and different equipment and things like that. In this particular case, I'm using an ELAD FDM S3 SDR. Um, that has 24 mega, up to 24 megahertz of bandwidth, so I can look at the entire FM band at once, and that's what you're actually seeing here, is the entire FM band at one time. I'm gonna take off my RDS window here. So you can see here's the low end of the band all the way up to the top. Now right now it's fairly dead band. There's a couple of small signals in here that I've seen kind of trying to come through that look like they might be um, some e-skip trying to get going. But for the large part, this is a dead band here in the Charleston, South Carolina area right now. Um, let me show you though what it looks like when we have an e-skip opening. You're going to notice a difference here, okay? So you remember what that looks like here. You can see down here, there's some signals. We have quite a few in the area, but it's uh, definitely got some gaps in there as well. This is what an e-skip opening looks like during a pretty strong opening, okay? And you're kind of seeing it already kind of come through here. If you look and you'll notice where this line is kind of right here in the middle. I'm going to pause it. Okay, so you'll see, you see this gap right here where you have a lot of blue? Now they have that line where I started my recording. Look at all the signals in there. Same thing down here. We have gaps, we have gaps, we have gaps. These are lines. So these, these trails that you see, these signal traces that you see coming down the waterfall, those are radio stations, right? Those are signals coming in as e-skip signals. And where you see these gaps here, you see those gaps filled with stations here. Now you're gonna see things like, if I zoom in a little bit, a little bit more here. You're gonna see, you see how like right here, you have some darker green up here, then it gets lighter as we kind of go down and then it kind of fades out a little bit, you're gonna have that with e-skip. You also see it like right here at 96 or 93.9. You'll have a little bit of fade out here. You have a big burst right here, and then it kind of fades out here. So you get that kind of kind of flowing, right? Um, kind of pulsing signal strength that's coming in and out and in and out. You'll also sometimes see twisting on these waterfalls that happens as signal phases kind of twist as they bounce around or even intertwine around each other. You may have signals that are kind of twisting with each other. You're seeing a little bit of that here. You have some signal here that's kind of on this uh, right here at 94.1. You'll see some twisting that's happening in there a little bit, a little bit here at 93.9 as well. I'm trying to see if I can see another really great example. Let me uh, do do. Let me move up the band just a touch here. Um, let's see. There's some in there a little bit. This was a pretty strong opening at the time, so I'm not seeing a ton of it. But you're going to have those those pulses of, of signal strength coming in and out, in and out, right? Um, and that's, that's a good indication. So... You, if you have an SDR, it doesn't have to be a full 24 megahertz. Um, you know, this right here that we're looking at is about an eight megahertz wide span, but I can shrink this down. You know, even if you're down to something like here, two megahertz, that's an RSP DX, right? Um, RSP DX has a 10 megahertz. I think the RSP duo might be, is it five or 10? Um, the AirSpy, I can get almost a two, so I can kind of get something kind of like this, right? Um, so you can kind of still see visual if you kind of go to an area where you don't have signals normally, find an empty spot on your, your band. That's why knowing your dead band conditions is so important. Find yourself an empty spot on your band, usually down towards the lower end. I like to use 88.3 for myself because... I have something on 88.1, I have something on 88.5, as you can see right here. And so if I see something on 88.3 and even 88.7, and I also use 90.3, 90.5, and 98.1 as well. So I go here, 
Here's 90.1, 90.3, 90.5. You see, I've got a little a bit of a gap here where there's not a lot of strong signals from my area. There's one here. This is a local, semi-local, or there usually is at least. But if I start seeing some different kinds of signals or some stronger signals here, then I know, okay, something's going on. So even if you don't have an SDR that has a large bandwidth, that's okay. Find yourself a dead spot on your band, get the largest bandwidth that you can so you can kind of zoom out a little bit and look where there would be a hole. Do you see something now? So that's why in combination with your eSkip alert from FM list, you can now do that. You can say, okay, here's my band right here. I'm just going to zoom in on this little swath right here. This is my area that I normally would look at. Okay, it's not even a full megahertz. I'm just looking at kind of uh, 90.0 up to 90.6. Yeah, so not even a one full megahertz here, okay? So this is kind of what I would have on my AirSpy HF Plus Discovery, pretty close. And I would say, okay, there's something here. Now, I can compare that. Here's my dead band right now. If I can do my SDR click, there it goes. This is my dead band. You'll see I've got one right here. There we go. Now I'm zoomed in. There's nothing, right? This is dead band for me. I'm on 90.3 is my center frequency. Here's 90.1, here's 90.5. There's nothing here. This is what I would normally see. So if I look and I see this, and I have an alert saying you may have an e-skip opening, and I see this, I say, well, it hasn't gotten to 90.3 yet. So try to get something on the low end of the band because we know that e-skip MUF starts a little low end of the band and raises up. Start low, and if I don't see anything, okay, clearly we don't have an opening here. But if I come back in... And I see this. <laughs> Let me zoom back in again on 90.3 here. If I see this, where I normally would not see those signals, now I know I've got something going on. Now there's something I need to pay attention to. And this can apply for e-skip. This can also apply for like a tropo opening as well, if you have some tropo. Um, you know, this is something you can use. You can, no matter what your bandwidth on your SDR is, if you have an SDR, this is why these are so helpful, is you can visually see openings as well as hearing them as well. So definitely recommend getting yourself an SDR, whatever you can afford. Uh, you know, the more, you don't have to go super expensive like the ELAD. You can go um, to something like, you know, the AirSpy HF Plus Discovery, $160. Right now they have a 20% off sale for July 4th. In the uh, on their website, so go check them out. Um, you don't have to have the entire band like this. It helps, you know. I I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of this SDR um, because it's allowed me to get things I would have never otherwise gotten by being able to record the entire band like this. I can go back at my leisure and review that recording that I made and grab whatever's there, and I miss nothing. Right? That's the great thing about these SDRs is if you have this set up and you're recording during a particular session or in this case an e-skip opening or a tropo opening, you miss nothing if you have the entire band. Um, or even if you have a section of the band. that Whatever that section is, you're going to get it all. So definitely recommend getting yourself an SDR. You can see, look at all these signals. Each one of these lines that we see here, these signal patterns, is a radio station signal. You'll see some of them are coming in and out. Some of them twist a little bit here. Some of them are stronger than others. These really big strong ones here, those are locals. But you'll see. I mean, even sometimes kind of semi-locals get replaced by these e-skip signals, right? You can see it on your waterfalls. You can see it through your FM list alert or from the map. You can hear it by listening um, and obviously, you know that I have found here lately, this year, most of my openings start somewhere around 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, and they cap out around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Those, the vast majority of openings I've had, that's what we've had this year so far. We sometimes get a little secondary burst later in the afternoon or later in the evening. But I, when I come into my, my shack in the morning to start my work day for my day job, 
I turn on my SDR, I look at the map and I say, what's going on? And I just kind of leave it here and I look. And if I start to see these signals down here start to populate, even if the rest of this up here isn't yet, if you start to see it down here start to populate and then you start to see coming creeping up a little bit and it keeps going up and up and up the band, you know you've got an opening and the MUF is going up. I actually have seen, I've watched it. Um, I was parked on 88.3 and had a station out of San Antonio and they were kind of in and out. And when they were in, they were strong. And when they were strong, I was seeing signals now filling in, going up. And then the San Antonio station would fade and those signals would start to disappear. And it would come back down again. And then here comes San Antonio back strong again. Now we're getting more signals again. So you could actually sit and watch the MUF go up and down and up and down by using the SDR. It's fascinating stuff. So those are the techniques that I use. I use the FM list map. I use the FM list e-skip alert. I use my waterfall on my SDR. I look. I don't. I, most of the time, my audio is muted, and I just have it sitting here running. If I stop my recording here and turn my live on, I have it out full zoom out as far as I can get for my particular SDR. I have it in live mode, and I'm just sitting here letting it run. No audio coming out of the speakers, just muted watching the waterfall and you can see the difference here again right you have these big gaps of blue where on the recording there were a lot of signals but here there's nothing and that's because we're dead band right now but if that starts to fill in if i start to see some of these areas in here and in here and in here and in here start to fill in with signals i know i've got an opening occurring i need to pay extra close attention Hopefully this information has been helpful for you as always. And uh, don't forget you can follow us on Twitter for more little tips and tricks and tidbits like this and a lot, lot more. That's twitter.com slash dxcentral. And if this video has been helpful, then you know what to do. <laughs> All right, so definitely, if you like it, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, comment. Don't forget to hit the bell icon if you do subscribe so you can be notified when new videos like this are available. From all of us here at DX Central, my friends, thank you very much for your, uh, your time today watching our video. We wish nothing but the best of DX to you. Many great openings and uh, many new stations in the log. 73, best of DX. Take care.